sitting there and, and, and he just kicked me out where we just literally almost started the 14th chapter. And some of you already know this story. Come on. But we're all here. We're all we're all from different backgrounds. We've all got places in our hearts that not even our wives or our husbands have touched. And we wonder why would God even call somebody like me? Why would God even move in my life? What good am I to the Lord? I quoted the scripture earlier. It says the fields are white and ready for harvest, but the laborers are few. God needs laborers in the fields today. How many know that? Come on. Amen. How many need laborers for the Lord? Well, since some of the songs a few minutes ago, I'm going to die on the battlefield. Why? Because I want to work for the Lord. I want to be a laborer in the war. I want to be a laborer in the service of my God. Not because I'm made to. Not because I'm forced to. But why? Because I want to. But why? Because the glory is over the Lord today. Not for me, but for Him. Amen. And you wonder why would God call somebody like that? Right. Oh. Why would God call somebody like you? Why would God even speak to my heart today sitting in the oh. church? After all that I've done, after every one of those holy and over Bible pumping people I've talked about, why would God oh. even touch somebody like me? Oh. God's got a job for you. God wants you in the service of the Lord. God wants to save you, sanctify you, and set you free. God wants to make a change that you can't make. God wants to make a move that you can't make. God wants to touch you in every way of your life. Uh, Even say people won't say anything. They won't say God move. It'll be a burden if they want to keep them in a box. Perched up on their seat. And crack the seal just in case of an emergency. That's right. Guilty as sorry. Come on. Come on. You've been there in yourself in your Christian life. You've been there where you're thinking, you know, I'm not bothering them up. I just see him when I need him and I'll call upon him when I do. Really doesn't work like that. God wants to be the very point, the main goal in your whole entire life. Now wait a minute, preacher. Wait a minute. Come on, brother. Time is something I can't give up in. I can't afford that. Brother, I'll tell you what, when you get on par for God, when you let God save you, I, I'm going to tell you what, you'll make time for the Lord. I love you because you might be first love. I'll get started here. You don't want God in the house today. God wants to speak to somebody. God wants to move. But God wants you to know today that it takes all kinds of different people. Amen. And sometimes you might say, why me, Lord? Why? And this story that I'm getting ready to read, this man is questioning the same thing. In the 14th chapter. Come on. It said that he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee that thou shouldest know it his will and see that just one and should have hear the voice of his mouth. God makes the decisions for him. It's not for you or I to decide. It's not for you or I to make a calling or, or to say and justify this one or that one. God's in the making. And when you begin to let God get in the work, God will move and God will talk to people and speak to their heart where you can't even utter a word. Now this is Paul writing. Everybody know about Paul? It says, For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou seen and hear. Man, I'm going to tell you what, God needs a witness in the house today of God. He needs a witness in the street corner. He needs witnesses in Walmart. He needs witnesses in Lowe. No matter where you go, God wants a witness. What for? Come on. To tell the glory of God. Amen. Come on. Some people say, well, you know what? I just don't know what the will of God is in my life. John plainly says what the will of God is in all of you. come to know what? Know Him through Christ Jesus. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. That's the will of God. I said, hey, man, my dad be here. We'll own a big fine car or a big fine house or have a million dollars in the bank. God knows I pray for that. He don't have it. Come on. I've been there. Pray for that. that that's not God. God wants you to come to know Him through Christ His Son. And you have salvage to give on the cross for you and I today. But it can't be done without a witness. Amen. Come on. You can't get a witness. Amen. Witness for who? For Christ Jesus. Amen. It says, and, and now, why tarriest thou arrive and be baptized and born the way you see him? Calling on the name of the Lord. Friend, I'm going to tell you what. It's not the water that saved you today. But let me tell you what. It's a good end result. Huh? It's a good signifying to the church huh? and to the people that are around you that, hey, there's been a change in my life. I'm going to wash off the old man and I'm going to let Christ put on the new. It takes the Lord to save you. It takes the Lord to cleanse you. Amen. It takes that plan of salvation that I was talking about to get into your heart today and cause you to reveal the truth in your life. Amen. 
I've said this so many times. You can come to church and sit in the pew all you want to. It doesn't make you saved. I swim in the water quite a bit, but it don't make me a duck. <laughs> you have to come to know the Lord today. You have to come to know Him through Christ Jesus. There's no other way. It's still the same plan today. I don't care how many preachers get behind the pulpits and convert and preach it in different form and fashion. As long as it's Jesus Christ and Him crucified, it's acceptable and great message and good doctrine. Right? Amen. God needs a witness. Because there are lost people dying and going to a devil's hell. Now listen to me, Lord. There are lost people dying and going to a devil's hell. Because let me say this before I do anything else, before I go any further. As sure as heaven exists, as sure as heaven is real, and as sure as the faith that I have to hang on to will end on that day when I see the streets and I see the gates of that city, there's a lake of power that exists for the lost. Amen. 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 Does it make me happy to say that? No, it don't, but it's the truth. And I say it on the truth. Amen. So listen, and listen good. It takes Christ Jesus, the blood of Him, to get to God the Father. Amen. There's no other way. It said that it came to pass that when I was come to get up to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in advance. Paul's talking about himself. He's talking about his own salvation. He's talking about his own calling to be a witness for, for God. We're going to get down here. I, I, I just feel like somebody here today needs to know. Oh, because there's so many times we say, why me? Maybe it's the experiences that you've been through. Maybe it's what you've experienced in your life and you won't become a the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? Maybe it's because of what you've seen and witnessed and have been through in your life that it's going to take to touch somebody down the road. Sympathy and empathy are two different things. If you ain't ever been there, you don't know how I feel. But if you've been there, you might can help me. That's right. God needs a witness to go out and say, Hey, I've been broken. I've been downtrodden. I've been in bondage by Satan. I've been cast aside by people who call me their friends. God needs people to stand up and say, I've been there. But I've been overcome by the word of my testimony. Because that's what counts. He said, we're made up overcomer by the word of our testimony. What, about you? what is your testimony today? Uh -huh. Have you been saved by the community church, friend? That's a bad testimony. That testimony won't stand. Uh -huh. But that you've been saved, cleansed by the blood of the precious Lamb. Yeah, the one that Isaiah said, oh, like a lamb unto the slaughter, without spot, without blemish." But the chastisement of my flesh was upon him. He was bruised for my iniquity. That's what it takes today. Nothing else will save you. Come on. But God needs a witness. God needs people who've been out in the trenches of battle. You know, we teach you to sit back in the war room. We teach you to sit back and strategically point out who will go there, but who's been in the trenches. Who knows all about it? You ask a man that's broke with the muck and the bar. You ask him what's in life. He can tell you, you know what? It's been a struggle. But I can say I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and all the other by the word of my testimony. That Jesus saved me. This is what Paul's talking about. He said, I saw him saved unto me. Now, this, this is what Jesus said. Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive my testimony concerning me. Uh, God, Jesus is telling Paul what? Make a move. Make a move. How many of us are guilty today when God says make a move? We say, well, Lord, it's not me you're talking to. The message come by and it went to the post to go to him, but it stopped here. No, God wants you to make a move. Until you're ready to make a move, until you're ready to step out, save the life, save the life. God will not do anything in your life. I didn't get too many amens out of that. <laughs> until you're ready to move, until you make that move, you can't be that witness. But again, until we make that move, we can't be that witness to the lost and dying world. Until you make that move, love, you'll never get saved. Almost never get you anywhere. King Agrippa said, Thou almost thought persuaded me to be a Christian. Yeah. Almost never got King Agrippa nowhere. Uh -oh. Straight to the gates of hell. God said, Paul, make a move. Yeah. Make a move. Now we're going to get into this just a little bit deeper. I want you to know who Paul was. Yeah. Come on. We all, some of us may know the story, some of us may not. 
Let me run through it right quick. Paul was Saul. He was a bad man. He was the worst of the worst. And he said, why would God call me out of the country? He said, God wants you. You've been in the trenches. You've been down in the kitchen. You know what it's like. But if you don't want it's like, then you don't recover. Amen? Glory. Paul was an overcomer. Not because of him. Not because of him. He wanted to be a witness for God. Amen. That's right. Amen. Glory. God wants somebody in the church. He's got to be a witness. You need somebody to say, you know what? I was wrong. I felt like I didn't have nothing. I just want to share this. I felt like I didn't have nothing. I, I've been there when the devil just drug me down. My head buried in love water. God wants somebody like you who's been there. To tell the person who's barely treading water and barely hanging on that there's hope. Come on. There's hope in Christ Jesus. There's victory. And that salvation is real. And that you know what? You can get through this. You can make it through it. It doesn't matter what the devil and hell compare you with. You will stand before him through it by the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh. And I said, Lord, they know that I in prison and be every now listen what Paul's telling the Lord oh. here he goes oh. on the yeah. 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 he said and I said Lord they know that I in prison yeah. I'll tell you who Paul Saul was now oh. Paul was Saul Saul's name was changed to Paul for those of you that don't know the story we got young convert yeah. oh. I know. <coughs> Paul was a man that ridiculed him he spit on, he killed, he destroyed, and went after the Jewish people. He went after God's people. He went out and delivered him to kill him. Now listen to what he says. He said, and I said, Lord, they know that I am prison. You might be sitting here today and said, Lord, you know what? I talked about that church like a dog. And then I had to walk to the door and look at a baptism. Why did you put me there, Lord? Come on. You know that I spoke about the righteous people like they were dogs. Lord, why did you put me in a position? And why are you knocking at my heart's door? <laughs> they know that I am in prison and be every. Now listen, he just didn't say four. He didn't signify two or three. But I beat every synagogue there that believes what? In me. <laughs> what he said, he said, Lord. Why would you call me? Why would you see me there? Because they know. They know this story about me. Yeah. But I'm going to go back and read this down the street this now. Paul was Saul. And on the road to Damascus, I urge you to read this story. On the road to Damascus, God got a hold of him. That's right. Here in a little scribble at this church, you feel like the Lord can get a hold of you. He's going to get your attention somewhere, somehow. He's going to grab a hold of you and he'll grab you okay, maybe, or maybe he'll leave you say, still small boy. But still, God's going to get a hold of you. But this man, Saul, was on his way to the Damascus. He persecuted the Christians, and we're going to find out here just a second. And you know what the Lord did? The Lord stopped him on that road. He blinded him with that light. He fell down on his knees immediately, like you need to do today, Mr. Lord. Immediately, you need to run to the Lord. And he said, Lord, what have I to do with thee? Yeah. And the Lord spoke to him. And he said, Saul, you find this hard to keep in these bricks. Yeah. The creek was a tool that they used to herd the sheep. Okay. Long with the sand. Metal tip on the eaves, very sharp. When the cattle and sheep deal with the little little girl, you know what they do? They gouge them. Gouge them. He said, Saul, this is a useless attempt. You try to persecute me, but this is a useless attempt for you to even go after a higher power like myself. <laughs> I'm all That's right. He said, it's a useless attempt for you to even come up against me. You find it hard to kick against a prick. And Paul said to him now, they know that I beat them. They know that I imprisoned them. Why would you call me? Why would you send me there? Yeah. I'm all Friend, you know what? I'm not the one that talk, knocks on hard doors. I'm not the one that calls on people. Uh, it's not my uh, choice. Uh, it's not your choice. It's God's choice today. Amen. He said, and when the blood, now listen to what he says. And when the blood of, of my Lord Stephen was shed, 
Do we all know the story of Stephen where they stoned him? Yeah. Or what? We made a witness! Come on! They stoned this man Stephen for being a witness for God! And he said that when the blood of the martyr Stephen was shed, he said, I also was standing by and consenting. I'll give him, I'll go ahead. Unto his death and kept the raiment of them that soon. You know what that means? Let me break that down to you. Here, hold my coat while I kill this man. That's what he was saying. He said, Lord, you know that I held the cloaks of the men that stoned and go read the sheep. Uh, why sheep? Why do you want me? Why do you want me? Ask yourself that question, baby. Maybe God's not in your heart. You say, well, why? Why do you want to send me out there? You know what I, you know what I do with you. You know what my family. They're like Abraham. They're idolaters. Come on. God needs a witness in that house. That's right. God needs you to go down to the highways and byways and be a witness today. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you where you've been. It doesn't matter what stone or what word you use to kill somebody. God is still able to save your soul. Amen. 